kids, if you ever get spanked by your parents, do not put your hands behind your butt. Just, just save it. Just, take, just it. take it because my hands throbbed for like three days. Right. My ass healed the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Luna. What's My, up, buddy? Not much. How are you today? Doing great. Doing Man, great. you are living the life. Trying. Man, I tell you, thank goodness for Facebook. Because I can follow you and keep up with the wild dynamics of your life. I love it. You live an insane life, man. Tell me what you do to go and enjoy life like you do. Just take it one day at a time. Just trying to do, you know, have fun. You got to work hard, but you got to play harder. You know, I love so, it. Facebook is really, really good way. Uh, so I'm from South America, so it's hard to keep connected with everybody. And, you know, Facebook brings a, a it's, it's excellent to just keep family around. You, you know? walked in this morning and I sat there and I go, man, you had a fantastic weekend. I saw you hanging out with your kids. You were on the Outer Banks. You were doing this, this, and this. You had your truck on a boat. And I'm like, man, this guy's living the life. And it's like, that's what I love about Facebook. I'm not envious of you. I am obviously in my heart happy for you. Like when you see people that are living a life that are doing well for themselves, that are an inspiration to others, and you're sitting here living your best life with your beautiful wife and your children, and you're living and having life experiences. And I see this scrolling through my feed and Facebook. And the reason I keep you and like all your things and make comments is because I want to see more. Like I'm tuning into your channel and I'm like, man, I want to see more because what happens is this weekend, I'm now going to go shoot some guns with my best friend and my brother, Boston Rob, who's here in the studio today. What's up, Boston Rob? And, uh, we're going to have fun this weekend, but you inspired me to want to go out and have a great weekend this weekend because of the fun that you were having last weekend. It's funny you mentioned that I had a couple other people that said, hey, count me in for next year if you're going to do that. No joke. I want to be part of it. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. These things take a little bit of planning and, you know, it's it's extreme. It's not for everybody. You right. Know? But uh, So what's your background? You say you're from South America. I'm from Quito, Ecuador. From, Ecuador. Yep. So really? Down, down south, um, you know, right by the equator. So um, just a normal, regular, average guy that, you know. You're not average. Don't be <laughs> humble. You know what happens, Boston Rob. You know what happens when people say, "Oh, I'm just an average guy." You know that's bull crap. Well, you just live. <laughs> you, you live your day by day. I, you, I'm not different than anybody else. You, you know, know what? I mean? just we're. I'm. Listen, we're monks, friends. You don't ever have to be humble around me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Own it, man. I'm I, extreme. Yeah. I love I, it, bro. I, I love it. Your energy it. is incredible. Like when we do business together and just any transaction, just I don't care if it's just a phone call for five minutes or me walking into your office, talking to you about raps and things that you do for a living. You're just good energy. I don't I, know how to explain it to the world, but when you gravitate towards people who have good energy, you radiate good energy. You've always got a smile on your face. Doesn't matter if you just had a car burned down, you know, something happened. You're looking at me with this smile going, eh, today's today. You know, tomorrow will be tomorrow. Right. That's right. It. Well, it's just life. Yeah. Yeah. So Ecuador. So tell me, when did you move here? So I been back and forth. So my mom's from Dallas, Texas. Okay. So uh, as a child, I came back and forth, but I decided to come and go to school February 2020, uh, no, 2000. Yes. So I went to Florida, went to, uh, try to go to full sale, um, full sale university. So was there for four years, graduated. And that's when I met Mary. So I was supposed to go back to Ecuador, but you met Mary. I met Mary. Where'd you yes, meet in Dallas? Um, no, I actually met her in Florida. In uh, Florida. Yeah, where, Orlando. Where? What were you doing there? Orlando. So she went to school and I went to school there too. Oh, that's where yeah. you went to school. Yeah. So she, she <coughs> I heard from, Dallas. I'm sorry. I didn't. Yeah. So my you. mom's from Dallas. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So she's, uh, she was working down in Ecuador for the, for the used military group. So for the government. Right. So she decided to stay down there and build a family down there. And then her kids, me and my sister decided to come up here and go so to school. So what'd you go to college for? Uh, digital media. Digital media. Digital media. That's my. That's Explain my that to me. I'm, I'm a marketing major, so mm -hmm. I, I love marketing. I love branding. I love sales. Tell me about digital. Digital media. So when I was 18, I got introduced to websites, and I completely lost, 
yeah, it's just something that just really so you're a my coder. Attention. Design front end, front end. Okay. Yeah. So I do. You know. So yeah. if you're someone listening and someone says websites, there's a front end and there's a back end. Correct. Explain that to me. So you have the front end, what everybody, the public sees, and then obviously the back end is all your functionality. So the your visual. Code. So yeah, is the front. Yeah. The visual is the my, colors, the the layout, the. I tell my clients my job is to make things look pretty. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So okay. that's that's basically it. So. And then there's all the smart people. That I would consider the smart people they, behind the scenes that make gotta, it all work. They got to make it I know. Flip, I, have, I just had one of my web developers on that I've known for 25 years, Mike Dickerman. And he was going in through the same thing. And he he is what he's, you know, it's like you have an orchestra of players. Like you have the violinist, you have the guitar player, you have the singer, and you have all these people on stage. And he's the guy, what's the guy at the very front called? The, one the, the director, the uh, maestro, what was the, it? Yeah, maestro in Spanish. The, yeah. Is that what it yeah, is? The one yeah. that goes, that holds the things mm -hmm. and basically makes everything work? La batuta. A la batuta. La batuta is called the, that's the, yeah. Love it. I don't know in English, but. That's yeah. cool, man. I love it. But yeah, so you're, you're basically the conductor. Yeah. You gotta, yeah, you gotta drive. Good. So, but, so I, I, I did my, uh, I graduated from full. So I did, uh, four years also in Ecuador of visual communication down there. There wasn't that much technology. So everything's on paper and drawing and dots and shapes and colors and stuff. So putting that stuff together with what I learned over here, they had million dollar lab labs at full. So it was just something inc incredible experience, you know? Um, but I think that that was perfect recipe for me to, just do what I do these days, you know? Yeah. So, and so what brought you to Charlotte, North Carolina? So, uh, we had an issue with, uh, with a hurricane down in Florida. We lost our house. So we actually moved in with Mary's mom in Jersey. And, uh, I found myself winterizing pools, spent so much money in my education and just like depressed. And, uh, in Jersey also is very unforgiving yeah. for climate wise. Unforgiving. Right? It's, oh God. And it was winter, winter. And you can't even pump your gas yourself. In oh New yeah. Jersey. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> you go to the gas station. You're like, Oh shit. I, the dude's got to get, I got to wait for him to come give me gas. Five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, pumping all this nasty water out of pools. that have been sitting there for you know oh, months Lord. and, uh, just found myself in a very dark place. How long right? were you there? Two months. Two? I, oh, yeah. yeah. You, you got out quick. Yes, you were I, like, okay. Yeah. So I got an offer here from Metro Media to come in and design for a Hispanic magazine. Viva, uh, Viva Magazine. Yes. Viva Magazine. Viva Magazine. So What were you designing? And, um, I was doing the magazine. So uh, actually myself. laying out the magazine. Yep. yep. Doing all the ads. And what the program were you using? So Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, a little bit of everything. Okay. I've been always very... Uh, you know, yeah. I, I use all my tools. You so. can click all the mouses really mm -hmm. good. Not me. So I have the visual design in my head and I'll sit down with my graphic designer, Rick, and my web developer, Mike. And I am the visionary where I like, I want this color. I want that. And I'll sit in front of them and I'm like, you just click the mouse. And they look at me like I'm an idiot and go, I'm just clicking the mouse. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't go to school to learn how to click a mouse, but I have a visual marketing ideas. So I like to get my ideas and they're like my arm. And I'm telling you, after 20 something years, we have created a dynamic that is amazing. So my graphic designer I've known for 25 years, my web developer for 25 years, they can read my mind now. Well, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. As a professional, you have to learn and, and just catch that idea. And while you're clicking that mouse, you already foresee where this is going yeah. in the direction. I right? love that. Yeah. So you so. deep down, you're an artistic person. So yeah, well, that's the thing. I came here, did Viva Magazine, Viva Magazine. Uh, I expanded and started doing Southern Sports Journal and the Spotlight Charlotte and the Spotlight Lake Norman. And, uh, I wasn't so much about layout. I'd like more the creative, like doing logos and doing yeah, yeah. websites and stuff like that. So I got an opportunity to work for Color and Demand right around the corner, South Boulevard, right over here. And uh, that's where I learned how to do wraps. And that's uh, signage wraps, large format printing and all that stuff. So um, I left Color and Demand and uh, decided to start my own thing. So out of my so garage. When, so when did, oh, out of your garage. Out of my garage. So tell me about yes. that. So that, that's, that's an, it's interesting story. Customers um, just dropping their car off at your garage at the house. It, yes. Really? Yes. Yes. That's so crazy. I, I, I built pretty good relationships through the magazine and through color and demand. Um, you know, so I had a lot of people come in and, and, and follow me. 
Um, starting a business is not easy. Everybody, you know, everybody thinks they're, that they can be an entrepreneur. Oh, if you're a business person, owner, you're rich. Right. I thought you're rich, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, trying to get the first printer was one of the biggest hurdles, right? And then, but you're the sales guy, you're the designer, you're the production, you're the installer. And in, in all the honesty, it's not, you know, that's not the perfect recipe. So very quickly I understood I need to start finding the best people to fit, to do the right things, right? Right. Now to this day, I don't even design anymore. So I've been, you know, you gravitate to all these spots where you, you know, you're needed. And How you're, long ago was that? So 2007. I started with legally 2008. So that's okay. So you're in your garage. Mm -hmm. Was Mary helping you at that time? Mary was working. She was a, a rat tech, uh, a doing what? x rays, rat tech. Oh, okay. Doing x rays, uh, okay. urgent care. Urgent care. So, okay. Um, on one of my trips down to Ecuador, you spend so much money traveling. So if I go down there, I stay at least two weeks, but generally I would stay about 30 days, right? And uh, she, if she could make it, she'd make it a week. She lucky, very lucky if she could get two weeks off. And uh, so she started getting a little jealous. And I told her, say, hey, if, if you want to start, you know, you can take the wraps. <laughs> and she said, oh, I can wrap. And, you know, we were like, yeah, sure. Long story short, she's actually one of the, one of the best. Uh, she of is fantastic. I've wrapped cars. I've been doing graphics since 96, but I was doing this regular stick on decal stuff. And I've been tinting windows since, you know, late 80s, early 90s. So putting on stickers and things like that, I've had an eye for. But, uh, man, I have seen her work, and it is impeccable. Like, she, women in, in any type of artistic or skill set, I believe, I am sexist when it comes to this. Women are way better. I have to agree because of the attention to detail. They pay attention to detail. It's incredible. They are so meticulous and, and a little easier to work. Way with easier to, yeah. to work with. Because if there's an issue you point out, you, you know, well, they'll, they'll, there's a male testosterone ego. Oh, huge. And one of the things that I had, and uh, I do business consulting. And one of the things in an article that I wrote for uh, paint protection and window film magazine was one ego per shop. So if you have multiple locations or you have a multiple businesses, you need to have one alpha presence per shop. One leader. Well, it's not necessarily a leader, okay? Because sometimes you can have a football team and you can have a quiet leader who doesn't have an ego, but does have an ego internally with himself, but he's not in competition with the team. He's pushing himself every day. So that's a quiet leader. That's somebody that could be a true leader. A true leader to me is a guy that orchestrates a team of people that are, are diverse in every role. That's what I look at. So when I say ego, I'm talking about the guy that has something to prove every single day to his team that he's the man or he's the woman or he's the, he's the shit. Right. Okay. A quiet leader knows he's the shit and doesn't need to even be re reminded that he is. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, totally. So in my experience in our world is I like to have one ego per shop, but sometimes a guy with the biggest ego is not always the best installer. He's not always the best person, but the other people in the group really gravitate towards his energy because he pushes everybody a he, little harder. He doesn't like failure. He doesn't want to fail. And if he fails, he learns from he's it. He's the first sure one it there. Again. He's the last one to leave. Right. And he's the one that sets the pace. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. But every person that's been a great anything has had a coach or someone in their ear behind them leading them the way. And those are the quiet, not quiet, either the guys that used to have the big egos who have grown up. And I used to have one of the biggest egos on the planet. And I probably still do, but it's comparable. I'm not as loud about it anymore. Matured. I'm just matured. Man, I'm yeah. almost 50 years old. I, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, if my resume doesn't speak for itself, I don't need to tell you about me, who I am and what I've done. I used to in my 20s. Hey, man, I've done this. I did this. Right. I died. Yeah. Well, I'm the same way. <laughs> same exact way. It's like I was beating my chest every day telling everybody how great I was. Now I try to stay silent so other people will talk on my behalf. And Micah, was up? the last podcast we talked about gassing people up. 
And one thing I have done on your behalf that you don't even know in the world is I have gassed you up. I said, man, there's only one person on this planet that can wrap your car. It's called Charlotte Vehicle Wraps, and Danny Luna is the shit. But he's really not the shit. He's orchestrated a great team of people. And his wife, Mary, is by far the best star I've ever seen in the planet. And if you go anywhere else, you're an idiot. So, yeah, we're very grateful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's not the gratefulness. It's the fact that you didn't have to ask me to do that. You didn't ask me to. You right. didn't say, hey, Mike, uh, can you please tell everybody how great I am today? Right. No. You've earned that respect with me. And so when you've earned that respect, I'm going to gas you and your business and your wife up because you earned it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. in life, I'm sitting here going, all right, if I'm gassing all the people around me, Micah, you better start gassing me up, man. I'm Mike Burke. <laughs> you, you gas yourself up. <laughs> so, but, but isn't that like part of business? Like, you know, I tell my guys, if we have the chance to work on your car, his car, yeah. anybody's car, right. there should be no reason for them to not leave without a five-star experience. And if they're, they did not get the five, please let me know. Let yeah. me know so I can fix it. Right. Yeah. And leading into the five-star experience, multiple times when you have a business as long as you've owned a business, as long as I've owned a business, you're not always going to get a five-star. Right. You're not always. I welcome. And I, I did a, a, a breakout session. I can't remember. I think it was in Indianapolis. It was at a trade show. And I did a breakout session talking about bad Google reviews and how important they were how important a bad Google review is. Absolutely. And they go, what are you talking about? I was like, bro, you got 300 five-star reviews. You're fake. All your friends did it. Your mom did it. Your mom's friends, your, your cousin, everybody gave you great Google reviews. They're not real. Okay. It's almost like the fake bots from Twitter mm -hmm. with Elon Musk, right? The, the Twitter thing He's like, bro, half the accounts on Twitter are bots going blah, blah, you know, right. They're not real. I welcome. So when a bad review comes in, the very first thing I like to do is thank that person for the review. Number one, thank them for their time. Number two is I can now change some procedures in my operation based on their experience, educating me going, Hey, you're right. I did not notice we were doing that. And now I'm going to correct it. And I'm going to thank you for your time. And I'm going to, re I'm going to reply back man, thank you so much, Mrs. Jackson or John or whoever the, gave us the review. We're going to change our procedures on your uh, suggestion, and we would love to make this right for you. We'd love to give you maybe a, a gift certificate to go out to dinner on us, something, because you just educated us on making our business better. It all circles back to that ego thing that you were saying, too. Yeah. You don't want to lose. So you don't want to you, lose. You, you want to grab every little bit of, you know, perspective from other people to try to deliver a absolutely better, a better but you can take a customer had a bad experience and turn them into your most loyal customer i had somebody that uh, i talked to a couple months ago and tell me uh, that story talking about the the reviews yeah so tell he, me about he it. was looking for a website designer in charlotte okay and uh, sure enough we came up where we're usually on the first page for top three spots um but there was one review that caught his attention he said i, I went through every single one of your reviews and I love the one that the guy said that you're worthless and that you're <laughs> way overpriced. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, this it's one that we failed, obviously. He said, no, but the response to that review was spectacular. So what I was actually, your I, I, Do you I, remember? I, I took the time to say, hey, I'm very sorry this went wrong. But on a website, things are fairly easy to fix. So if you let me know what I what we did wrong, I'll be more than glad to fix it and make sure I earned the five star. And uh you know, I explained that we go through stages when we do building a website, we do the home, you sign off on the home, then we build the other pages. And then once we're done, you sign off on it, then we go live. His partner was part of this process, uh, not not the gentleman that left the review. So gotcha. I tried calling, texting, emailing, I exhausted every way to be able to just communicate with the, with the client. And uh, I just say, hey, if you ever give me an opportunity to fix it, I'll, 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 I'll try to earn those the five star review but yeah. so but that was that was the end of it there was no response must have been that. years ago though. yeah yes yeah, three four years ago yeah i was about to say your business is on fire there's no way you're getting a bad review now right now yeah well <laughs> that's that's the thing I, I i tell my guys please make sure that we you know and, and if we if we get a bad review that's okay it's yeah. not you know fix it so you own a company that does uh, media. What is that company called? So we have Web Design Charlotte. Web Design Charlotte. Uh -huh. Micah, you hear that? Web Design Charlotte. So that's uh, all 
digital media, all your uh, so what do you do in stuff. that realm? Like, what does that mean when you do web design? Website. Charlotte? What all, was I, if I call you, what services does that include? Just a website? Is that hosting? So no, we we leave the hosting to the uh, big guys and all okay. that stuff. So yeah, you're just yeah, a creator. Just, we create the okay. websites. We get you on the first page of Google. What's a turnaround Google. time? For a website? Yeah, yeah, if I call yeah. you and say, hey, man, I want a website on themikeburkrightnow.com, and I want to get it turnkey, and I want to make it all about me. Depends on the how quickly you respond. I would say fair four to eight weeks at the most. Okay. So it's, it's so not, two months. Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah. But I've got to provide a lot of content to you. No, we actually do that. For you, you. do? So we come in, we interview you. Oh. That's well, that's one of the biggest issues that we had at the beginning. We were waiting on the client to provide oh. the content. So now and you they go get it. They will take forever. And now then you. once they give it to you, they're like, you know what? Just go with that, and I'll keep giving you some more. So it, it's up in like never ending projects. So, so you have people that come out and do interviews? Go ahead, do an interview. We get all the information, we put it together. That's S brilliant. Show it to you, you approve. So, if you're you, like a reporter, if you go and you look at our websites that we build, we don't just copy and paste text and put a picture and call it a day. Everything flows. There's, you know, depending on the style, your logo kind of dictates the style. Of the, the so you the design website, logos, so. correct? Okay, so you do the layout and you do the back end. And if they want to do changes, do you like a monthly program where you do edits and changes? So these websites are fairly easy for you to do your own changes. But yes, we do we do uh, changes for the, our clients. If there's people don't want to deal with it. Are they cloud based? Yeah, everything's cloud based. So generally WordPress, I would say is ninety five yeah. percent. Yeah. You know, but we also do Joomla, Drupal, Magento. You know, it, it all depends on what. And you all want. the websites now need to be mobile friendly. That's your main. That's, that's your main yeah, thing. 80, 90 percent of your traffic. So you can make something look really great on a computer screen that's like, say, you know, thirty inches, but you need to make it look good on a six-inch phone. It has to scale and it has, has to, to be scale. spectacular. That's the key. Yeah. So we start with desktop, and then at the end we make it mobile. mobile friendly. But mobile is usually my to go Focus. to. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then Charlotte Vehicle Wraps is your other company. Yeah. So I gave that to Mary. You gave yeah. it to her. Well, she yeah. she earned it. She earned it. She earned that one. So yeah, she runs. It's that. not easy, man. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, she handles everything. Uh, from, she's from, incredible. She I help I, I help her with the sales and I help her with the design and, okay. and uh, business vehicle wraps, right? How many so. vehicles do you wrap in a week? It all depends. I, you know, it depends on the coverage. If you're talking about a full wrap, I would say three, four. But you do stripes, racing stripes, Absolutely. accents. Love stripes. I, do you do printing in-house too? Correct. You yes. do the printing too. Yeah. We okay. have three latex HP The commercial cars. stuff is, is big. I love that commercial stuff because it opens door f for me to come in and do other stuff for uh, my clients. Build the client relationship. Correct. Hey, you need to redo your logo. Oh, by the way, your website needs outdated. And let's if if you, if you if you look at our, our bigger clients, yeah. uh, not not like Sunbuilt, but like your local guys, right? Right. I made them through wraps. And now I do their website, do all their marketing, I do everything for that's them. That's brilliant. But but that's that, that that was my gateway. But basically it was creating a relationship. Correct. They trusted you. That trust was there, you know, now all of a sudden you don't pressure someone. You just say, Hey, I do this, this, and this. If you need my help, let me know. I just show you yeah. what I do. Yeah. yeah no pressure go. sales. Love that. I'm not, I, I, I've had people call me out and say, Hey, you're not a good sales guy. You just run your mouth, but it's just, it's passion, yeah. you know, and in the people that see it, I appreciate it, you yeah. know, especially over the phone. I answer all the phone, you know, Trying to answer every question people have, but you have you know. a little bit of an accent, but I would never would have guessed that you're from Ecuador. My mom's from, from she's American. She's from the U.S. So oh, she, gotcha. I, I, I bet that my first word probably was in English, okay. you know, so, but, uh, how was your she, Spanish? Perfecto. Perfecto. Okay. Same. I love it. It, it. You know, you hear people that have been in the U.S. for so long and then later they're like, oh yeah, my Spanish is starting to get, my little. friends make fun of me. Cause oh, I, yeah. I do, I do the jump thing where I'm like doing the Spanglish thing and they're like Spanglish. Yeah. Yeah. Where did that word come so, available? Yeah. Long it's, time ago, I guess it's, it's just a mix right there, you know? Yeah. So, but, uh, that's cool. So yeah, I just, you know, going back to, to business, um, uh, with the raps, Mary has, a. she's done really well. Yeah. You know, it, the hardest part is to find the people that are on your same bandwidth, right? Oh yeah, doing quality, like minded, doing quality stuff. Look so forward to going to work. We yeah. we battle the same issues. I mean, I've got labor issues too. I mean, I had to let a couple guys go here recently, and it's it's a bad attitude. It's not bad work. It's bad attitude. When you come to work every day with a bad attitude, you got to go because it's contagious. You're not manageable. Yeah. You, I can't, I can't get through to you. If you're having personal issues and you're having, you know, substance abuse issues, I can't fix those. You know, I'll do the best I can to coach you through situations and problems as a friend, 
But I live a different mindset now than I did 10, 15, 20 years ago. I used to have a lot more empathy for people during, during nine to five. Now from say eight to six or nine to five, whatever your work hours are, it's a rate of return. I, I, I now have an investment in you and my investment needs to be paid out by a certain rate of return. So I'm not looking at the person that works in the company from nine to five or eight to six as a person mentally, they're not a person to me. They're, they're a service that is providing, um, an investment through Sunstoppers. Now at five Oh one or at six o'clock or whenever the, the clock out time is, I will be the best friend. I will be the best coach. I will be the best mentor I can be. And it's at a bar having one drink or it's at their house or it's on the lake or wherever we're not talking about business. Right. Then I'm a personal ally to you. You I, need that though. You need to build a good relationship. 100%. With, yeah. But you can't do it when the customers are walking through the front door. The phones are ringing. You got to be paying attention. It's almost like... Tom Brady stopping in the middle of a plague to go over there and talk to his running back about something that happened last night. You're in the game. It's game day. It's live. You're on TV. It's playing focus. right now. Get 100% of your focus into the game. But after the game, he walks over, hands the guy the football, puts his arm around him and said, hey, buddy, let's go have a drink and talk about what the fuck's going on in your life. That's 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 proper uh coaching that's that's leadership too right yeah so going back to but you know a lot of guys get personally uh emotionally personally uh hurt that i can't take an hour out of a day but from one to two o'clock to talk about a problem that just happened in their life and i'm not making it my most important thing like I, i'm i'm supposed to stop what i'm doing pay attention to you, put my arm around you, comfort you, and listen to your problems. During the day when I have my own set of problems, I'm a firefighter every single day. I got some type of fire with a canister on the back putting out whatever flame. You know, I have a multi, you know, state company. I have a, a very lots of employees. I have lots of people. It's like having a hundred children. Exactly. And you're sitting there going, well, I love them all. I want to give every one of them a hug. I want to comfort them and I want to be there for them. But there, there's a time and a place where you can and you can't. And I think that's the disconnect between the workforce and the workplace now is people are now taking, even in school, we're taught to not come to school if you're having an emotional day. That's crazy. It blows my mind. What is your thoughts on that? I think this generation is going to have some major issues, you know, and it's, it just keeps. Now, degrading. when you say generation, classify that from like, tw like what, 16 to 30, 16 to 20. Where's the cutoff? Going back to my grandpa used to work for Texaco. Okay. He was down in South America in the jungle. Sure. With rigs. Okay. That was the hardest working class in the world. Like they would see like the Americans were the best. Right. The absolute best. Fast forward to today. We're the worst. They don't show up to an interview or they, they get the job first day, go to lunch, and they don't even call back to text message to say, thank you, this is not for me. They just walk away. So it's really, and it's, and that, yeah. now that's in what, what, all the different? Well, I'm just it, talking about kids being responsible, kids. Having Held that push, that one accountability, yeah. yes, and and they don't like confrontation, so they instead of they, having a confrontation, they just walk away. They, they they think that that's that's proper, that that's something that it's it's a it's an option. Man, when it's, I'd oh, get my ass beat if I did something. Oh, like that. oh it's just yeah, no, <laughs> but you're burning a bridge for absolutely no reason, right? Because if it's if if there's an issue where you don't like the workplace for whatever reason, number one, let us know. Second, say hey, this is not for me. I'm okay. Well, a year, Just two be years, transparent. Three, three years down the road, if we cross paths, I, let me shake your hand. There's no, yeah, there's no reason yeah, why this, yeah. uh, why you got to walk away. How do we, how do we get that back into the world? How do we do it? We coach I, people, I, I, have I, podcasts like this, tell the world this is what we need to do. Education, yeah. We just, need better leaders. Yes. Well, you have good leaders. That's the thing. There's, there's people. There's a lot of talent too. Right. So I just with this gun thing that happened with this with the school, there was a lady saying, hey. We haven't changed. We've had guns for many, many years. You know, 
what has changed is the parenting, the way that we're handling things and how the, how these kids are being raised. Oh, 100%. You know, it. your kids shoot guns. Absolutely. How old are they? Oh, absolutely. So Aaron's 15. Aaron's like better than me. Oh, my, my kids are better than me. So, and uh, I make an effort so that they are educated and they know how to properly handle but a firearm. You did it at a young age. Correct. I bet they started shooting. They were what, five, six, seven? Six. Yeah. They were six, seven years Yeah, but old. you were supervising them. And then what happens is, and I tell people this, had a lady in our neighborhood. I think I told this story already once, but she was against guns. My son had an AR-15 when he was like 10 or 11. It was empty. There was nothing in it. It was like a 22 AR-15, and it was sitting on the wall, but it made my kid feel safe at night from nightmares that he had a gun on the wall. There was no ammo. The ammo's locked up in my safe in the garage. There's no ammo. There's no clips in it. There's no even a clip in it. But one of his friends came over to the house and saw the gun and told his parents, my son had a gun on the wall. Parents, Ooh. parents called flipping out telling my son is never coming back over to your house and that he's blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm not sure if the, if these people are Democrat, liberal, Republican, I don't know. Right. But obviously they were against guns, you know, during the riots and during some things that happened in the U S where neighborhoods were starting to get influxed with people with not being happy. Mm -hmm. Guess who I saw on Facebook at the gun range, those people. They were buying guns and they were shooting them at a gun range, getting their concealed weapons permit. So obviously they felt some type of threat in society. What our neighborhood's safe. Ain't nobody walking in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody coming in there. Our, our doors are locked, but who cares? But somehow the media put some fear into these people and they felt responsible to go get guns. And you know what? That kid that of their should have been learning how to shoot a gun at eight, nine on our, on a, on a farm or somewhere in a gun range, just to get the power, the feeling of that thing going off in their hand and respecting what it can do. But when you play video games at eight years old and you're shooting everybody with AR 15s and shotguns and all types of different things, our parenting style, we didn't have virtual reality, third person shooting games when I was a kid. We didn't have that. We had a Daisy BB gun. Like, right. We were like, bink, and it, you could shoot somebody and bink, it was like, bink, that was it. Like, it was one cock, I think it went, pew, you know, maybe maybe 50 feet. I remember the pump. <laughs> Mine wasn't even a pump. Mine was just a cock, and it went, pew. And you could <laughs> see it, like, dive by the, the BB diving by the end of the room. Um, I think educating younger people to go out and be outdoors, to go out and experience an outdoor experience. You know, that'd be really, I mean, you're an outdoors. I mean, you were just out there with your, your you're riding four wheelers and side by sides and getting muddy, fixing tires. It's a perfect opportunity to teach your kids that not, teach them. not everything's perfect. You're going to forget stuff. Things are going to break, but also take it. Same thing that you're talking about, teaching them about guns, teaching them how to drive. Driving is such a big thing, such a big part of your life. And, uh, you know, I've, I've lost some really good friends to you know, driving accidents. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I make an effort, take the side by sides, yeah. have them drive and Put just them in some and tight situations. And exactly. hundred yeah. yeah. percent. At the beginning, Mary wasn't, a, she, she, wasn't, she wasn't too happy, now with this, but now she understands she, because we've been in situations where we've lost control and you know how to handle it. Cause Mike, you, you hear that? Cause you practice. What's up? It, so we need to start a school, um, with side by sides teaching 13, 14, 15 year old kids how to be in very intense situations and driving. And uh, we will probably have a lot better drivers. What do you think about that? I think so. I mean, yeah. you go on the highway and you see people on their phones and cutting over and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's they, terrible. They, they don't understand the consequences. That's, you know, like things can, life changing situations in a matter of seconds. Yeah. My dad, my dad investigated fatal wrecks for like 20 years and he has some, he has some photos that will make you put your seatbelt on. That's yeah. for sure. Wow. Yeah. So. His dad did. Um, that's you're on to something there, Danny. Maybe we should talk off camera about this new business opportunity where in your 13, 14, 15, I got a side by side, a couple of four wheelers. We've got some land. Let's put a driving school a driving together. School, yeah. An yeah. extreme driving extreme school. Extreme driving school. Like, you know, how you go Absolutely. ride go karts at the go. That's not extreme. That's in a setting of like a little like, no, go in the woods. You got a tree coming up. You got a duck, you know, on a four wheeler. Then all of a sudden you got to turn quick. Then all of a sudden you got a hill. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, the M experience for the BMW. Absolutely. So. 
I have well, one of my cousins. She actually went over there, and she's like, "I had no idea my car could do that." Exactly. And and now she feels safer, yeah. empowered, and she yeah. knows how this is going to react in the event that she does hit a puddle of water or she yeah. starts sliding. It's not. It's not the end of you know. There's. They're, I've they're been all. driving since I was 16. I'm 49, and I have never driven a car like I drove. I have a GT500 that I bought. That's orange. I love it. And I like it because it's orange. It's got 760 horsepower. I cannot drive. I can't drive the car worth a shit. I, I'm okay. Like I'm, I'm okay. But I go to the driving experience, the Ford Performance Driving Experience in Concord, and I drag raced it, and I did great. It was just hold on, floor it, and go. That was fine. Then I got on the the oval, like the track where you go and do like inside, and then you go on the bank. I was scared shitless going over this bank. I mean, it was like a turn. I don't even know the banking turn. Is it 30, 40? Michael, what are the bank turns? You, what are they degree? I think Charlotte's like top five. It was, it, it made my butt pucker. Okay. And I'm holding on and I'm sitting there just death gripping this thing. Right. I come in after a couple laps and the coaches and I'm last, like, I mean, everybody's gone and I'm over here just like thinking I'm Ricky Bobby, you know, that after he got in a wreck and was coming back and he's like going fast and like the field's lapping him. Right. I'm that guy. I'm, over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally in the back going, <laughs> Man, I'm going fast, and the whole field's just flapping me. And uh, so I go in, and the coach, the, the driver instructor looks at me, and he goes, man, you all right? I go, no. He goes, what do you mean? I go, I'm dizzy. I, I'm sweating. It was like in July, like last Adrenaline year. Adrenaline kicking in. I'm telling you, man, I, he said, you got to look up. I was looking like down. Oh, you fuck. He said, man, you got to look like way ahead of where you're going. And he goes, all right peripherals he goes all right we're, we're gonna go out just me and you so what happened is i got another instructor they took the field of like four or five cars that went ahead right this other instructor got a car and he said just follow me and he said and then he would be in my helmet and he would go all right look up look at this corner boom and he would start taking and i started following him and we started off kind of slow and just getting into a rhythm where mm -hmm. you just kind of just doing this this and this and this and I wasn't paying any attention to it. I was just listening on the helmet, just like, oh, you know, da 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 da. Next thing you know, I was doing good lap times. I'm like, holy shit, nice. I was freaking flying. And you didn't know you were flying because you were driving smooth and comfortable and relaxed. And I started looking up. Right. So in driving, having an instructor, that I've been driving for 30 years plus. You're still learning. And I just learned the most yeah. valuable lesson. It's funny because I was coming down the airport because I fly a lot and I'm always traveling. They have those like tunnels that loop down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about with like a parking deck? Oh, yeah, yeah, I park at the very top mm -hmm. and then you have like the little spiral those down. Those things are tight. They're especially tight. Especially a big truck. Yeah. yeah, I'm in my truck. I'm in my Denali and I'm coming down that thing. And it's like I'll get halfway down and I'm looking at the next corner. I'm looking at the next corner and I'm not even looking. And all of a sudden I'm like, whew, 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 I'm going down that thing like so fast and I look forward to it every time I go flying I'm like oh I get right. to go down the tunnel and I get to go fast around the corners and uh, it's just little things like that being a kid have you done the, the, the extreme uh, what is it called the extreme experience uh, with the Lambos and the Ferraris no, and the, I have not so going back to the employee thing yeah you know I uh, I like to do the stuff with my employees so I actually took one of my one of my guys and, and where uh, do they do this uh, Concord oh okay so you pay for a uh, eight laps i think it is okay. and and you can pick either lambo ferrari audi they, they got the whole yeah the whole they got thing. them all so i got him to drive the lambo and the ferrari i did the lambo the ferrari and then at the end i i paid for uh i did mclaren at the end so okay. learned exactly what you were saying things that are like and i've been driving i've been racing for for a little bit you but, have um, yeah i yeah. did not know that racing what? Uh, uh, dirt bikes uh go-karts cars that's amazing yeah. so it's, it's always Just been uh, it's, it's my dad has been racing cars you know most of my childhood you love it yeah i love it yeah, well it's part of it's part of part of the if part you could pick in, one in DNA. which one do you like the most vehicle wise just if you could go race anything, if you wake up on a Saturday morning and say, I'm going to go race this, and this gives you the best adrenaline, the best pump, the best everything, what, do you, what would you race? So at, at my stage right now? Anytime. You're, I, from, from 18 to now, if you could go pick one thing that you say is the most memorable. Rally. I would say racing rally. rally. What's yeah, a rally? Like, like just dirt, back roads. I don't know Do, what that is. Yeah, just uh, like we're rally championship, WRC. I don't know um, what that is. But what kind of car? Pestron, uh, uh, Ken Block. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Dirt, I've know. seen those cars at yeah. uh, SEMA. Yeah. And uh, those are like the ones at the big, uh, 
what are they called? The brake. So, so yeah, you got the ones that are for drifting. Okay. On, but you do that in dirt as well. So. And they like a course. It's like uh, a dirt course. Yeah, yeah, just back roads. You know, in South America, there's jump there's, them and there's stuff? so much stuff uh, outdoors that is it's. Uh, you don't need a, a, You've done a closed that? circuit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, yes. That's so crazy. My dad, my dad, uh, I grew up with my dad doing all that stuff. So, that's but yeah. so anyways, I did this Ferrari Lambo thing and I, it's, you're on the, on the edge of, I, it's kind of hard to explain. It's the adrenaline is so high that things look slower. The air is thicker right. and, and you're just at that edge going as fast as you can at the point where you're like almost in a, in a bad situation you know you're like like just and you're trying to keep it safe as well too right uh but that was an incredible experience that i uh how long ago did I, you do that uh we did this uh december did this, mary go yes absolutely yeah she drove yep oh, what did yeah, she yeah. drive mary drove uh lambo and ferrari oh that's cool yep so i got aaron to do a uh passenger experience right he got off that car and he was just like on fire man yeah so, so. you have three kids Three, Aaron fifteen, Tommy six, and Emma five. So five. We had a big gap. We big were, gap. We, yeah. We yeah. just things are change done? in life. Kids are done. No more. Yeah, no, no more. Do you no fix more. it or she fix it? Yeah, she did. I, I, <laughs> I backed out of that one. Yeah, and she hated me for that too. Yeah, man, I did so. the uh, old snippy snip about I don't know thirteen years ago. Yeah, yeah, I was I was gonna do it. And I turned around. I was like, I man, can't do this. I got t I got tricked into going. You know. Right. Yeah. She's like, I'm not having any more kids. And she's like, I made you an appointment. I said, for what? And I go to the appointment and I get this Indian dude over there. He goes, let me see what we're playing with, Mr. Burke. <laughs> I said, playing with? I said, he's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's a hard one. And I don't know why the, the people that do vasectomies or work down in that department, but they always have the coldest, coldest doctor's offices yeah. in the planet number one number two they must go and recruit supermodels to work in that oh area. they make you feel horrible oh yeah. i'm sitting yes, there looking yes. turtling up and i'm sitting there like oh uh, and i'm scared to death this over here this girl's over there like looking at me and i'm like don't look at me please yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah they always have like these these like really good looking girls they do these, like what is yeah. the, i mean Come i couldn't on. have had like elda right the, the, you know the the 200 pound whatever it's funny but but these guys do this all day every they day that you know i just i, I don't he, think he i could do that he made me feel pretty comfortable man until i saw the needles coming out i mean they were oh, like this big yeah bro. well that's so that's when i turned around yeah i was, yeah. I was like I was yeah like, and then the thing is like i had a stomach ache for like two or three days that was it felt like somebody hit me in the stomach uh -huh. for like two or three days you're but, lucky the reason i backed down is because one of my good friends he couldn't even sit in his car and turn the steering wheel because he got so inflamed and really? swollen he had like basketball size. Well, I'm going to say something pretty funny. Um, I used to be able to hit headboards. And after that, I was hitting belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I, was thinking, I, was I like, guess, I guess it just needed to work yes. its way back up or something. I don't know. But that, finally, I think a year later, it finally got to a good, happy medium. I don't know. Yeah. It was funny, but yeah, it's a big glad you didn't right. get one. Well, yeah, no, we, uh, we, we had a big gap. We had Aaron and, you know, it's just, life shifts you yeah. know priorities and things and then uh, you know so who plans all the fun vacations you or, or we Mary? both do, do so we're and, and we recently picked up on on scuba diving scuba uh, diving yeah so i'm scared to death incredible won't do it so i'm gonna drown my really There's good no friend i troy uh we went skydiving solo not tandem yeah we did that it was Where? incredible uh down in chester really so he they let you go the first day well, you got to do the class and you got to train and you got to do your, your, you know, how old do you have uh, to be? Uh, I think you got to be 18. I'm, well, not, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm you you got to be under 250 pounds. I know that My, I'm under 250 there now. I'm about 235. There you go. I'm six one now. I think I was six two, but, um, old age is catching up with me, but my son turns 18 tomorrow. And he wants to go skydiving. I went there skydiving. You know. It's it's incredible. I love it. But I was I was able to go the first time when I skydived down in Maxton, Lorenberg, and I was able to do what's called a static line jump, mm -hmm. where they hook you up to the plane. I get out on a wing and I float down and I just let go. And there's a guy in my helmet, and I float down. And I'm about free falling for maybe five seconds, and then the chute opens up automatically. So it was it was a static line hit the cable the chute automatically opens and then the guy gets in the helmet and he goes, Sky, uh, get your toggles, and I'm in the helmet I'm here like, <laughs> and I'm he's sitting there going, uh right 180 and I'm sitting there going all right I got my toggles and then I I 
pull down on the right one, right? And the next thing you know, I go to the right side, right? And I'm like, oh, shit. And my stomach's going nuts. And then I go left. And then he goes, all right, flare. And I go, flare. And I mean, all right, take both tongles and pull them down. And I'm just like, okay. So I pull them and I shot up like a rocket in the air. That was the scariest thing. Because you're breaking. I'm breaking. Right. I'm going down, like floating down. You don't think you're going that fast because oh, you're, no, no, yeah. you're just floating, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then I was a flare. Whew, you, you think you're on one of those uh, rides at the Carowinds where you sit still and then it shoots you like freaking right. 300 feet in the, the air. The G's are spectacular. Yeah. My stomach. I don't. It, it was crazy. Yeah. So tell me about your experience. So, so yeah, we were, we were having a couple of drinks with Troy and he's like, hey, let's go skydiving. I'm like, I, and Mary's like, done. Now I'm like, damn, man, what am I getting sucked into now? Um, go, go to Chester. Troy's the experienced one. He's military. Dude is jacked. Yeah. Gets on the airplane, has me his phone. He says, do I video some pictures? I'm like, sure. So I see the airplane goes and they start jumping and waiting for him to, you know, come down. And uh, sure enough, that guy comes with one, one of the, the, the jumpers. You know, he's like, hey, you looking for your buddy? I'm like, yeah. He's like. He's in a tree. He's in the tree? A hundred foot tree. Up, He made a wrong turn and then got caught and landed on a tree. Keep in mind, this is the experienced guy we're talking about. Now I'm like, <laughs> what did I What did I get myself into, right? They get him. He was there for an hour or whatever. They went and rescued him. Um, so anyways, my turn. Get on the airplane. And there was about 15 people and they were all jumping together to do their little shows, right? Right. That as soon as everybody jumped, that thing was bouncing up and down, and I had a uh, panic attack. Oh my god, yeah. At that point, I was like, well, well, Why am I doing this? Like, <laughs> remind me, why am I doing this? So, and it's like, It's your turn, go. And uh, one of those things, I'm like, Okay, I, I'm not not gonna back out, not okay. at this point. Yeah. So, I closed my eyes and jumped. And uh, sure enough, you jump with two other guys, making sure that you're, you're doing your stuff. So, um, once you pull that cord, it's just like. Yeah, and everything's so bright and pretty and just yeah. so peaceful. It is um, incredible experience. But I, I told Mary, I was like, I'm, I'm done with that. Troy said, "We're the let's do scuba." And I'm like, I don't like trap. Mary hates being trapped. That's that's just not an option. He said, "Already, uh, you, it's paid for. You just gotta go. It's in a pool. It's at the YMCA in Rock Hill." So sure enough, I show up. Mary didn't want to do it. And uh, I did my first class, and I called Mary. I was like, this is not what you think it is. This is actually, like, really, really cool. And managed to convince her, and she came down, loved it. We're, like, a year and a half, two years into this. We came back from Galapagos not that long ago. December, we went down to uh, – this is probably the best experience I've ever had in my life. How long did it take you to get your scuba license? So you get your open, uh, you, you got to do the six or eight dives, and then you do your open water. Uh, but then you have, uh, you got to do 20, I, don't, I, I forgot how many, how many number of dives, but you got for your advanced uh, certification. And then we did our uh, nitrox okay. uh, for gas, right? So uh, we got all three certifications before we actually went down to the, the Galapagos. Um, Six months. It's it's been. Yeah, I, I, I would say you could probably do it within a, a couple year. months if you do it. You know. Six months uh, to a year. It's just more the number the the, the, the more you go the dives. Yes. Yeah, I got it. Now, you know, how much you, did that cost? It was bartered. So, oh, but I, okay. I, I yeah. I'm just saying retail. Do you I, know the value? I would say I think the open water was about two, three hundred bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, and then each class, you know, I would I would say it's somewhere around there as well. Okay. Equipment wise, that's where it gets tricky because you can go cheap or you can you know. Uh, you bought your own equipment. Nice stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Well, you got to be comfortable with your stuff, right? Right. And this is the, you're like talking if you about go on your, a vacation. Can you go rent scuba? You can. Oh yeah, absolutely. But. Uh, to Galapagos, I told Mary, I was like, I, I, I'm taking my own stuff because oh, cool. that's it's it, you feel comfortable. Well, with you your know own your own shit exactly. Yeah, you exactly. see the regulators, you know the stuff works, you know it, everything's everything. Everything is awesome and peachy until hmm. you have an emergency. Mike, have you ever scuba dive? Never. Me either. I'd like to. Not me. I'm scared. Sharks. Oh my god, we were like really? hundreds, if not thousands, of sharks, like 10, 20 feet away. They didn't mess with you. No, no, they didn't nudge you. No, no, they're just living. It, it, 
cruising. They looked uh, at you like rays. you were a big fish. You just you're just holding on. <laughs> the first day when we saw the first shark, I I went into a panic attack. Oh, I, I was would, like, what what am I doing? There's no yeah. way. I want but, to spear fish. I said, yeah. I want to go down with like a snorkel or something and go down to like maybe eight foot of water or something and go or six foot of water and go down and like take a spear and like shoot it and spear like fishing. Ki- kill Sorry. the fish, yep. psh, spear it and like pull it up like a caveman and come in and like cook that food. Oh, yeah. That's what oh, I yeah. want to do. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's going to be a good I'm, experience. I'm, I'm Have def- you done that yet? I, I will definitely. I, I want to. Let's set really that bad. up. Yes. But I don't want scuba. I, w- I don't mind holding my breath for a minute and a half underwater or either putting a snorkel, snorkel or something yeah. like that. But. Um, I can get up to the air that I need in a hurry if I need it. Like, I'm so afraid I'll put a tank on and I'll just suck all the air out in like two You'd or three be breaths. You'd surprised <laughs> how, like, how, like, 180 degrees it is from, from, what, from the concept that we have. Maybe I'll try it. I'll, I'll try one and see how it goes. And not only that, but just like we went and did uh, uh, the cenotes down in Mexico. And this what is, is that? Like, cenotes are uh, just holes in the ground and... I would I would say the feeling that I had it was fairly similar to you being like in a cathedral. You okay. know, it's you yeah. feel this. Yeah, you this feel big some, and yeah. this ginormous, yeah. amazing. Did you see any aliens? Spectacular down there? place. No, uh, no, just a bunch of any uh, old spaceships or anything. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the ancient aliens one time on History Channel. Man, they were had like cave diving where they were like. That's huge in the Yucatan Peninsula down in Mexico. Yeah, that's right. For yeah, yeah, you, so. that sounds pretty cool. I, I've known a couple guys that are deep into that stuff. I, I just leave I it alone. Know. I, you know, I'm just man, there's things my brain just doesn't have time to think about. I just leave it alone. But That's there, good. there has to be anything there, next for so. you in business. Are you got any new business opportunities, new ventures, or is just basically on autopilot? You have a- so yeah, I, this I don't have autopilot. It's just uh, yeah, you're, I, I didn't I, think so. You, you seem you, like a guy that's always looking for the next thing. You always moving forward. Yeah. So, um, you know, right now I'm I'm at a stage where I want to find more talent. So feel a little more stable right. with what we're doing talent when you say talent what are you looking for installers installers for what? it's 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 a it's a very hard oh job. for the rap business. yeah it's very uh You're trying it's, to find it's a installer. hard demographic yeah it is everybody thinks they're the best oh they uh, all do that's remember when i said one ego per shop correct yeah and maybe they, you should have a rap install company of nothing but females <laughs> so one of the best installers that we had was a female yeah and uh, she, she, she was pregnant at that time yeah. so she was clean and she Sadly, she just passed yeah, away. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so, so, she was awesome. I do remember her. She was incredible. Yeah. Oh, we took her to SEMA. I know. She had the tattoos she was, on her. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool this, chick. The, what was the, her name? Kaylee. Kaylee, yeah. Yeah. This girl, she wanted to go to a Panthers game, and uh, she wanted to leave early. I said, you can leave early as long as you finish that trailer. She finished a 28-foot trailer within hours. Like insane, and rocket spectacular. Speed. Yes. Oh God. Oh God. So. Yeah. But she was trained by one of the best in the in the industry. Who's that? Her uncle Jeremy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. That dude is. That dude he's is sick? serious. Oh. Serious. Where's he out of? Uh, he's here in Charlotte. And you don't yeah. sub him. Um, so we've gone back and forth. Uh, he he just does installs. He doesn't do the production or design or any of this stuff. Come he in, just stick it, stick it, stick it. So, but he's he's been doing this for. You know, he's, he's, forever. he's OG. Yeah. He's, he's like, yeah. And the best here in yeah. Charlotte, I would say the number one. Oh, for wow. Sure. That's awesome. So, but, uh, but yeah, so he trained her. They didn't really get along or sure. I don't know what sure. happened. Family so she issues. came back, I'm but sure. then, then she went back. So, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, uh, an experience to see like Maylee, uh, Mary and Kaylee work together. That, that vibe of you just know, like, we had talked about getting people that, uh, are vets mm-hmm. from the military. Uh, and getting them out and giving them job opportunities and teaching them uh, window tinting and teaching them paint protection and teaching them autumn, you know, residential commercial tinting. There's a lot of guys out there that come in from being, you know, overseas or they've been in the military for eight to 10 years and they just don't know any other identity. And um, I think there's an opportunity. Huge. They know how to make their bed. They, they're disciplined. They know, they, they know how to get up in the morning. They're structured. They have manners. They respect a leader. They respect a boss. And I'm sitting here going, why can't the whole country, when they graduate high school, just go do a year in the military? Whether Not active. To just, get basic. Just yeah. to go do the parental things that parents forgot to do yeah. to their kids. Like, they one year of, like, push-ups, running, regiment, get up, go to breakfast. Structure. Be held accountable for your actions. And if you cry, mommy's not here to wipe your tears. That would be life changing for it, this country. the whole country. Yes. I think we would have the strongest country in the world. Absolutely, we do. But it would be ten times stronger. 
going back to employing veterans though yeah. um so we decided to this kid from brazil has his sister call me he's visiting and uh his sister says hey he wraps car in brazil he wants to come in and uh see what you have and i said sure, sure. come over yeah awesome and then w while they were in my shop he didn't know how to speak english so she's translating she's like right you're like would you give him a job and i'm like absolutely this kid is so i give him a piece of vinyl he's he's incredible installing so fast and looks at me with this huge smile, smile. i'm like you've never touched that quality vinyl he's like no the stuff that we do over there is like oh yeah it's paper uh, thing compared to here basic right. and the cheapest because it's stretch. just it's Same third thing. world yeah and they, exactly they, they yeah. Want cheap, yeah they right? get the crap so so we um decided to look into bringing him in thirty five thousand dollars later been waiting two and a half years and i think we're almost there That's so but this kid is uh How, why get, get, tell, tell me why it's so hard to get people here it is so the talent is here so th there there are a lot of really good installers but people come in and uh learn the ropes and then they want to be their own boss oh of course right so and i turn around and i look some of the guys that, that, that work for us or with us um they're doing okay but their marketing sucks their financials suck you know they're good installers that's right so they're okay with doing one job a, a week you yeah. know and if they don't get that job a week they're, they're and hurting. It's, it's a bad situation yeah. so um you know i i would like for people to have a little more vision that you know you can't just be the best by yourself you got to have a team of people that are the best at every spot to make sure that you yeah. you deliver so i there's a shortage on talent that's undeniable right, right. people don't want to work they think they're the best they don't want to put the hours they don't necessarily have the the, the structure and the discipline right yeah. um and it's it's a demographic that has a lot of issues with drugs yeah Ours does too. Yeah. The so. thing is, I have people all the time look at me and they go, Mike, what's the secret to your success? And I go, what do you mean the secret? And they go, yeah, I mean, you're just so successful. And I mean, you're doing so well for yourself. I mean, there's got to be a secret. And I said, there is, man. There's a huge secret. I said, but everybody's got the same secret. And he goes, yeah, what's that? And I said, work harder than everyone else. When you're sleeping at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm at the gym at six. I'm doing emails at eight. I'm at 10 o'clock at night paying bills at my kitchen table, answering emails from the day before lining up work the next day. On Sunday, a customer will call me and say, hey, it's my only day off and I need my car done and I really want you to do it. And I tell everyone in my life, hey, I'll be back in a couple of hours. I go tent the car and I come back. Saying yes when you're hungry to everything that is thrown in your lap. If you can make $20 or $50 or $100, say yes. Because every yes turns into another opportunity. Because I always look at it like this. I don't want anybody else doing that car but me. And if someone else touches that car, then I lost that customer forever. And they're going to go be loyal to someone else. I want loyalty for every single person. I want to be greedy. And everybody goes, oh, well, you know, be greedy. I said, no, no, I'm being greedy by saying yes to every opportunity. I'm not being greedy as a person. I'm being greedy as if I don't say yes to this person, he's going to choose to go somewhere else. You're going to miss out. I'm going to miss the opportunity. 100%. And so for the first 15 years of my career, I worked six, seven days a week. I was up before everyone else, 11 o'clock at night, still working. And everybody goes, man, you didn't really live. No, I drove a company van for 15 years. A company, Lightning Mike's window tinting van. I went to Vinny's. I went to strip clubs. I went to steak dinners. I went to Outback. And I drove a Lightning Mike's van everywhere I went. And it was my advertising piece. And everyone knew and me. And you were the, proud of it, though. I was proud. Of course. You know why? Because every person that saw me in the parking lot asked me, oh, you do window tinting? Yeah. Here's my card. Business card. Here's my card. Here's my yeah. card. Here's my card. Mm -hmm. I'm a walking billboard. My everywhere. I mean, I don't. I think for 15 years I never wore another shirt. I don't care if it was Friday night, date night, Saturday night, Sunday, church, didn't matter. Just wearing Lightning Mike shirts. Everywhere I went, I was a walking billboard 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is the secret. If you want to know the secret to someone's success, they eat, sleep, breathe, and lived their business more than they live their life. And then later, now at 50 years old, I can now live 
my life. But that's why you're coaching. That's why you were saying that now you empower people. Now I'm empowering people. Exactly. You're doing the same so thing. I try to follow the same same idea. And sure enough, exactly what you said. I, I, I'm the guy that you get an email at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because I was, you're I up. couldn't go to sleep. And if I'm going to be awake, I might as well be working. Be productive. Correct. I was in Galapagos. Well, here, last yeah. week, this week yeah. at Outer Banks. Yeah. We're on a vacation. The phone rings. I answer the phone. Landed, landed the client. And I, I, I turn around and say, Mary, I know that you don't like this, but if I didn't answer, that's that opportunity is gone. Well, not only so, the opportunity, but that opportunity that you just closed pays for your next vacation. Oh, absolutely. So yes. if you like the vacation that we're on, family, mm -hmm. I love you guys, but if you like the side-by-side -side that we're riding and the 15-year-old son wants his own side-by-side, -side, daddy needs to answer the phone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that is kind of funny, but I, I, I shared with you that we had a blowout on the tire yeah. on our trailer and uh, I was very close to calling and saying, Hey Mike, we're going to have to reschedule. Right. My son said, this is an opportunity, right? Aaron, 15 year old, 15 year old. He, he said, are you going to say no? You're going to pass out on an opportunity because you don't know what this can do for you, for your business or just, and he put me in a place in a second. And Mindset I was, and I was like, I was like, you you're right you're raising a man it's yeah i'm and he's em, listening em, to you empowering this and now kid, he's and now giving he, the advice back now to you he is pushing me that's awesome 100 percent. boston he's, rob, he's watching this boston he's watching, rob right? you hear that about your girls right everything you do preach say whatever they're gonna say back to you later and you're like holy shit now i got it. yeah <laughs> right yes you preach to your kids and then all of a sudden they start preaching to you and you gotta look them in the eye and go you're right and that's the thing. I don't bullshit with that. Right. Like I'm very, like, yeah. I, I, don't, like, I don't hold back. Right. I, I just, I'm very raw and honest awesome. on everything. Love so to meet him. A lot of people think let's that get I'm him a, out to the farm. Absolutely. Let's ride some four wheelers oh, and hang out. That'd be incredible. Guns. Yes. Yeah, let's do absolutely. That. I'm in. Yeah. Tomorrow. Spear, just spear fishing. The, let's the, do it. Yes. Absolutely. I'm in hunting. I'll have my agent talk to your agent. That's, <laughs> 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 that's something he told me this weekend. He said, dad, I would like to go hunting. We've, I've never hunted. We have a huge farm. We hunt all the time. We yeah. have three, four, 30 foot tower tree stands on our farm. You, you could sit in a condo on your front porch and just watch them eat in front of you. That's awesome. Anytime you want. Very cool. But you gotta be very selective. You get only the people I invite on my property the very first time, you're only allowed to shoot a doe. A okay. doe, basically the female. Mm -hmm. You cannot shoot a buck. Cause you haven't, here's why. Number one, we have food plots. Number two, we have, we feed these deer year round with corn. Number three, if you're new to hunting and you're new to my property, you didn't put enough time in to shoot a buck. Oh, you don't even know yet what it takes. Yeah. No, it's not that. You didn't earn it. You didn't bring corn out. So if you want to keep hunting there, you got you to gotta work. You got to come weed eat. You got to come cut the grass. You got to come out there and clean the wasp nest out of the hunting during the summer. Pitch in. You got to pitch in. Of if course. you want to shoot a buck on my property, you got to pitch in. And you can come shoot all the does you want because there's thousands of them everywhere. But if you come out of there with a 12 point buck, the first time I take you hunting, it's my deer. I'm keeping it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I follow the same, the same concept with the side by sides. The kids love riding the side right. by sides. Yeah. But when the fun is over, it's time who's going to gonna wash it? Who's washing it? Who's cleaning it? And those things say that's it. Oh, they yeah. get oh, muddy as oh crap. God. You have to lift it's them up, get under the wheels. Two, two, three hours. Yeah. All day. Yep. Two pressure washers. Right. Absolutely. And yes. the electric ones. I got two, yes. yes, exactly. <laughs> I got a hot water pressure washer. That's badass. That's that's yeah. that's it's different. A, it's a game changer. That's a game changer. It's a game changer. It absolutely you it melts the stuff You right don't off. realize yes. how incredible. Those things are like three grand. Thirty five hundred. Uh, uh, for a good one, four. I know about four, yeah. yeah. But but we need it for like business. Uh, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, pe cars, when yeah. people don't remove their 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 vinyl in right. a timely manner and it starts cracking and, right. and, and infuses onto the paint, yeah. It's a nightmare. Rob. And, and they don't even realize the labor and what it takes a to get this. A hot water pressure washer would help probably get paint protection off pretty easy. Oh, too. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm, I'm on to something here. So, okay. Thanks for and, bringing that up. Hey, we're taking credit for that one. Okay. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, think about cleaning the vehicle prior yeah. to installing the stuff. Right. When you got greasy surface. Yep. Decontaminates and just, it. it. It reduces your, your time, the labor into prepping. Yeah. Preps everything. So that you can do stuff, right? You know, I, I was telling a customer, I don't know, 20 years ago. He calls me up. He goes, <clears throat> yeah, man, I want to get my windows tinted on my car. And I'm like, all right, man, it's going to be like 180 bucks. He goes, 180 bucks? This is like 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And he's driving like, I don't even know what kind of car it was. He's giving me a hard time. And I said, sir, I'm an artist. 
He goes, well, I don't care. The shit only costs like $15. <laughs> I saw it at Amazon. I mean, yeah. or not Amazon, uh, AutoZone. He goes, I saw a roll of tin at AutoZone. It was like 30 bucks. I mean, I know you only got $30 into it. And I said, fair enough. I said, fair enough, sir. You're, you're correct. I said, but I'm going to give you another flip side to this story. I said, I can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Sherwin-Williams. I could buy a $20 gallon of paint. And I can go to my son's room. And I can forget to take the outlets off the wall. And I can go in and take a $20 gallon of paint and paint your whole room for 100 bucks. I said, there's going to be paint on the carpet. There's going to be paint on the trim. There's going to be paint on the outlets and the sockets. And I said, but it was only a $20 gallon of paint. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so true, though. The dude goes, oh, okay. And I go, listen, man. I said, or I can give a $20 gallon of paint to an artist and you come back a day later and everything's been taped and every line looks perfect. The outlets were removed. Everything was taped up absolutely flawless. There was plastic down on all your carpet. There wasn't one single paint that even touched your carpet. And you never even knew I was there. And I charged you $300 to paint your room with a $20 gallon of paint. I said, I can take your car for a hundred dollars. I said, but you don't own the right to complain about the job I do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, with the wraps, everybody thinks the wraps should be like super cheap. Oh, they and, should and be right. It's like, Hey, you, you got over I watched a, a, two, a, a, a YouTube thousand, video. 1500 bucks worth of materials. Yeah. And then you got a four, three, four day install on something. And right. you, you think this should be a thousand bucks. That doesn't not even minimum got wage on the building, got power on the building. You got advertising, you got employees, employees, you have unemployment, you have workman's comp, you have um, social security or social security. You have to match bookkeepers, bookkeepers, CPAs. okay, CPAs, computers, Inches. front counter people answer the phone, phone systems. But you're only allowed to make a hundred dollars on the, mm -hmm. the transaction. But the building I'm in was free, buddy. I'm sorry. So if some guys in your garage back in the day, mm -hmm. they were competing against you and Mary wrapping cars in your garage with no overhead other than your mortgage on your house. And then all of a sudden you get this big building and this big facade. Now you had to go up on your prices and people are like, well, dude, I got, uh, my wrap, last wrap job was two grand and now you're $3,800. What, what changed? And I go, we have a building. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? Yeah. We're still charging the same square footage that, that we were charging 10 years ago. You gotta go. Up. I was, I was able, well, I started big because I, I i got educated from from the get-go on on how to do this properly so my margins were always decent enough to keep going and, and that's why there's there's people charging 1500 bucks for a rep is like you need to go learn math there's a, a calculator you got to yeah. understand that waste y yeah you, you what if you mess up a piece what are you working for free yeah is it, you know or yeah. what, what they are yeah so it's crazy it so. is and that's the world we're living in today man absolutely well my, i had a uh, there's a family that came from Ecuador and they uh, desperate for a job. Okay. And uh, they don't know English. Okay. I can't really have somebody in, in working with us that doesn't know English because you need to be able to communicate. Sure. So, and I told them, hey, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I, I, I really can't. But there's opportunity everywhere. And, and the lady asked me, she's like, like, show me opportunity. I said, hey, my son went around our neighborhood putting little pieces of paper saying, let me fix your mailbox. The kid is 15. Yeah. Came back within two weeks worth of work with 600 bucks in his pocket. Yeah. From, from sending and painting mailboxes. Yeah. Now you get a call from the HOA saying, hey, the pool, Can you do all the, of them? The, the, the door at the pool that needs to be sanded and painted and all this stuff. And it's like, you just, you, opportunity. Opportunity. In speaking of opportunity, how many times have you ever had someone on the side of the street walking in any city ask for money? Too many? A lot, right? Yeah. Okay. I came out of the gym one night. It was like 7 o'clock at night, and I was on Independence Boulevard, and I walked into the Boston Market to go get some chicken. To, for I was hungry. I just mm -hmm. got finished working out. I was on my way home. Guy walks up to me. Right across the street is a Krispy Kreme donut and a little efficient, like, in-town suites, like a weekly rental right. hotel. And the guy walks over there, and he basically almost opened the door for me. I'm 6'2", 6'1", 230, 40 pounds, and I'm, I'm not a small guy. And I literally get very defensive. I had my 9 millimeter sitting in the pocket, and I'm over there about to grab it going, all right, I'm about to get jumped. It's by this a little dude. Like, I started feeling funny, right? It was like that little spidey sense. I get out. I'm very like, hey, bro, what the fuck? You know, what are you doing? Hey, man, you know, 
I lost my job. Um, my car broke down. My family, I have a little baby across the street that's hungry. And my wife is over there taking care of her. And I'm trying to just see if I can get some food. He didn't ask me for money. He asked me for food. That's a different ballgame. That's a different ballgame. Yes. Okay. And I said, okay. I was driving my GMC Denali pickup truck. And I had just gone out to my farm that weekend. And there were bugs all over my windshield. I mean, well, you know you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, the country right. evening, boom, 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 just gnats and whatever hitting your, your you know, windshield. I knew that I had a microfiber and I always carry some invisible glass in my back seat. And I looked over at him and I said, hey man, today is your lucky day. And he goes, what? And I said, I will give you $20 if you will wash my windshield. And if it looks good, and I'm happy with your results, I'll give you $20. If it looks like shit, I'm going to give you $10. For at least trying, I guess. For trying. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to go inside, and I'm going to give you this can of glass cleaner, and I'm going to give you this microfiber. And by the time I order my food, and by the time I get my takeout, and by the time I come back outside, it better be done. And I said, if it is, I, I pulled out $20, and I said, this will be yours, and you can go in and buy your own food. Right. I came back outside. I looked at the windshield. I got up on my tire. I was the customer from hell. So I got out on my tire and lifted because I have a lifted truck and I lifted it up and I got on there and I looked. I was seeing if I could find one bug. One bug. He did a good job. He did a good job. Awesome. And I gave him $20 and he looked at me and he goes, thank you. I said, no, 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 no. No, you don't need you to thank it. me. You earned it. I said, you didn't ask. You asked me for something for free. And I said, listen, I needed something done. You did it. You earned that $20 and you did a service for me and I paid you for it. And then he looked at me and he goes, can I keep this bottle of glass cleaner? And I said, yes, sir, you can. Wow. But what I'm saying is. You, you, you changed his day. I well, changed. His, not just his day, but yeah. I changed his mindset. Instead of asking for something, if you go to a parking lot walking up to someone with a bottle of glass cleaner and a microfiber and said, Hey man, I'm down on my luck, but I have this bottle of glass cleaner. Can I clean your windshield? And could, it's hard to say no. That's, it's hard to say no to someone that says, I want to do something for you. I'm down and out. I'm having a bad day, right. I'm having a bad life. I've had bad luck and I'm trying to do something to earn $5, $10, And if the world would take that, and just know that, like you said, your son went around the neighborhood. He turned around and sanded mailboxes and painted them and made 600 bucks. It's crazy. You created your own opportunity. If you're hungry enough, I had a guy on the podcast last week who was complaining of some things. And I said, you haven't tried hard enough. And he goes, well, I've tried everything. I know you haven't. You haven't been hungry enough. Because if you're hungry enough, I was watching a show with Brad Pitt and I think Angelina Jolie or somebody, it was one of the movies where they were torching a rat on a stomach. I don't know what movie it was, but the guy was getting in trouble. It was like a police officer or something that, w that wasn't doing something for like a mob guy or something. It, maybe it was a Fast and the Furious movie or something. I don't know what it was, but they put a rat on the guy's stomach and they put a can over it, like a metal can and he mm -hmm. took a torch and he started torching. So the rat tries to eat his the way. The rat out. tried to eat his way through his stomach. And all that basically says is you're not hungry enough because you'll do anything on the planet if you're hungry. Enough. In this country, you don't have an excuse. You have zero excuse. I made a video and I posted it on Facebook. I was, uh, to begin with, the, the amount of homeless people in, in Charlotte now, it's, it's scary. Go it's, to San Francisco. It's, it's, oh, no, no, no. But oh, it, yeah. like, I'm talking like in the past from 10 years. Oh, to now? To oh, now. It's, it's, quite, insane. it's insane. But I walk out in Carowinds Boulevard, and um, I see this guy walking with a bag, picking up garbage. And I'm like, in, you know, lost track of it. I told Mary about it, and I was like, hey, if you see that guy, please have him come over by our shop because people tend to throw garbage on the side of the road and just pay him. Sure enough, I saw him again. I gave him 20 bucks and I was like, dude, this is, this is, you're not begging for money. You're actually picking up trash from the, from the ground. Earn it. It's hard. It's hard work. 
it's hard to say no to somebody that at least is giving it a shot. It's trying, you yeah, know. Exactly. So, but it's in in the in this country is uh, I, I I get it if you're like, you know, bad situation, bad you know, deck of cars you've been you, you've been dealt a, it just in a bad environment, Africa, South America, where we're like you're limited and you're just pure poverty, right? Here, the beauty of this country is here. If you try, you will make something. 100%. And if you try really, really hard, there's no reason for you not to be successful. I've traveled many countries already, and we are the most spoiled country on the planet. We're spoiled. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you've seen Ecuador. You've seen yeah. other countries. You've been to... No, people don't understand the reality. It's just all the people that are complaining about the, the American bubble. They they need to go and pay go, a visit with thirty yeah just yeah. just go for thirty days and the, the the reality is 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 brutal and it's so wrong, very hard to understand. I, I took Emma, she, she was four I think. Right. There's a four year old little girl with a thing of candy on the street, selling stuff so that she can go back and give that money to her mom that's sitting in a corner. She's got all the kids just working for her, but the condition and the environment is just just very unforgiving and uh to come back and, and hear all these people complaining about this and it's like you guys don't have a fucking clue of what like miserable misery and just like poverty like how far it can go i mean i've, so. I've heard my my um mike dickerman was on my website a website guy i'm sorry mm -hmm. he was on my show <clears throat> long time friend he grew up in Columbia, South America, uh, American, and mm -hmm. he was a missionary, his family. And they were teaching small areas on how to get water from the ground. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. Like well, these people were walking miles to go get fresh water. Right. When we can go anywhere, any public. And, and that's the kid because mom and dad are like ill and dying yeah. and the little kid is taking care of the Buckets family. going to get water. Like, it's right? crazy. But we can go to a QT, a gas station, McDonald's, walk in the bathroom and turn the pocket and water, in, yeah. water's on. Water's on. Crazy. Want, and they have hot or cold. Which one do you want? Right. Yeah, but we got people in other countries walking miles to go get water. And homeless people in the U.S. can walk into any McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, gas stations, anywhere and get hot water or cold water. And if people really want to make a difference and they really think that things are bad, go do a mission trip. Exactly what you said. Visit if, some countries. Go and help. Yeah. You know, people need it. Well, they the really thing do. is the power of giving. I get so rewarded every day giving. I give good advice. I give good love. I give hugs. I randomly sometimes give hugs to people. I can tell people when they have a bad day. I can read people. I can read their energy level. And I can befriend somebody in line. And within two or three minutes, I've actually had enough conversation with that person. To be like, all right, man, give me a hug. I can make someone's day just with a hug. It's positive. Just keeping just the right, just love, man. Yeah. Everybody needs love. Everybody needs affection. Everybody needs a hug. I can hug a man, hug a woman. It doesn't matter. Bring it in, man. Bring it in. Let's give it. Let's give each other a hug. Like th that's how I I go through life. Going, man. If I haven't hugged at least ten people today, I haven't lived. You're a hugger. I love hugging, bro. That's I awesome. give the yeah. best fucking hug on the planet. I should literally charge people for hugging me. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. If man. anybody wants a hug, <laughs> it's a dollar ninety nine on Cash App. I have one of my <laughs> I have one of my clients. She's she's the uh, was like Urban Gypsy. Or, yeah, uh, and uh, she travels to Asheville back and forth. Yeah, uh, but she's uh, she has a stand. It's free hugs. That's awesome. Free bad advice. Free bad advice. I love it, man. <laughs> All That's kinds awesome. of like crazy stuff. So it. yeah, Danny Luna, you're a badass, man. I appreciate it. I that. love you, man. You're a great guy. You're an inspiration. Every time I talk to you, I get a positive vibe. Like I came in here with a smile and now I've got like wrinkles on my eyes from smiling too big. Well, we need to, we need to plan something. We're doing involved. something, man. Yeah. You're an outdoors guy. I'm an outdoors guy. You have a beautiful family. I love your family. I love Mary. I love what's your oldest son's name? Aaron. Can't wait to meet Aaron. He sounds like a cool kid. He's, 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 he's the younger ones. Kid. I mean, I, what you said, seven, Tommy's crazy and five, Bashit crazy, seven yeah. and five, uh, six and five, six, five get it but they're mm -hmm. probably not quite to the right yeah well they, they're, they're 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 old caring. enough yeah. that we're actually able to go out and do all these outdoor stuff yeah. you know maybe you and aaron but, should but just come out to the land one day correct. let's do that yeah then we can bring the oldest one out i have a 15 year old son uh -huh. and a 17 year old son that turns 18 tomorrow there you go and uh we've got some toys out there come out and enjoy yourself what does the 15 year old like to do my 15 yeah 
Uh, he's playing football now. He's 6'2", 240 pounds. Wow. He's 15. He's wow. bigger than me. Wow. Bigger than me. And uh, he just started playing football. Uh, he hasn't played any games yet. He's been working out with the team. He's a gamer. He's super smart. His name's Camden. He is the silent kid that you don't mess with. He's the happiest, sweetest kid, but he has that switch. And I can't wait. He's a gentle he's, giant. He's a gentle giant, but he's like me. I will be everybody's best friend and everybody's friend. I will never hurt a fly, but you hurt my feelings. I will fight you. Right. You hurt my feelings and I'm ready to fight. It's weird. I don't know what it is, but it's like you hurt my inner core because I'm a genuine that's the alpha. Yeah. yeah. You just hurt my feelings, bro. Like you can hit me, slap me, call me every name in the book. Don't care. But you come at my feelings. Oh, it's all or your family or yeah. it's all brands. Yeah. But no, Camden's the same. He's a sweetheart. Uh, he's got, he's got the, um, mom's jeans he's got that passive sweet gene but i have seen him when he's mad mm -hmm. and i can't wait to see him on the field whatever position he's going to play he's going to kill some kids do they train jujitsu uh they did early okay. uh when i had uh, camden early on we did jujitsu we did uh, some mixed martial arts some rolling my oldest son did motocross and he did do some jitsu but he learned how to roll which is basically fall mm -hmm. and did a bunch of stuff with us for about a year and i think when he had motorcycle wrecks he would tell me when he got that dad i rolled my shoulder rolled my neck and i rolled so he didn't put his arm out i taught him when he was very young when he raced motorcycle not to ever put your arm out like to tuck and roll i said break your right. collarbone bro don't break your arm right your collarbone heals fast arms don't a wrist don't like they, they can get injuries for life and you can be screwed up i said but you've got to hold on to those handlebars and i said you can tape your freaking uh collarbone back on you can't tape your your your, your arm back together i had to sell my dirt bikes and that was my passion like i if yeah like, we love them yeah that was like i was the kid that would get up at 6 a.m just to go ride my bike while love everybody it. else would go do some other stuff isn't that so, awesome that's yeah. what turned you into the outdoor guys you are now absolutely but aaron yeah. got into jujitsu he loved it too uh sadly we stopped because of covid and yep. and things got Same heavy thing. And, and didn't get back a lot of gyms closed a lot of my really good friends i have a, a studio uh gym that i went to for years uh, called uh, hoist gracie jiu-jitsu it's turned more into an adult gym mm -hmm. so the kids things just did kids you need good instructors that have patience and you have to be around other kids to push yourself but if like you have an mma type gym where you've got four kids it's it's, oh, it's more adult driven yeah it's more adult for driven. sure yeah. yeah taekwondo that's that's the one yeah. where the kids well go. you know what we Aaron call it six years of that you know what we call taekwondo right Screen. Take my dough. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, hey, we're testing for belts and stripes this week, kids. Yeah. It's going to be an extra hundred dollars. Uh, another little stripe, <laughs> yes, for sure. More boards, um, guys. We're we're not at the white uh, uniforms anymore. Next week, we're changing to blue, and every parent needs to bring two hundred thirty nine dollars for the blue uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did six years of that stuff. So it's but, very good uh, discipline, yeah. man. It's it's a good camaraderie. It's a good confidence builder. Um, I understand the youthfulness of it. Of you, you know, when I did Taekwondo when I was young, we had an instructor Kim at Kim School of Taekwondo who had bamboo sticks who would hit us. Who were I wouldn't say abusive, but they you get out of line. They they had the military type of uh, you could hit people back. Like you know nowadays, you just hit my Johnny. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course oh not. my God, okay. we're gonna call the police. And it's like in school. I was I was telling my Aaron about that. In school, we have our teachers would come and hit us with a ruler. I would hit or I with their keys. I, I get spanked. Yeah. I know I was in elementary school and I'd go to the principal's office and, and they had drilled holes in the paddle. It was like probably a three inch paddle of wood, right? And it looked like so a ping pong good paddle. It was like a big wound, but they drilled holes in it. And that, that because you get more airflow right. when you try to spank that ass. I wouldn't go back and tell my parents that I got, yeah. I wouldn't go back and tell my parents that, you know, the teacher just spanked me because my parents would hit me harder. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh yeah. If I got in trouble at school and I got home, dad pull out the belt. Right. I was cool with the paddle. That's, and yeah. it's funny because I would put my hands. I know my dad's probably gonna listen to this, but I remember my dad spanking me one time with his belt, and I'd put my hands back behind my butt to mm. try to save it. No, kids, if you ever get spanked by your parents, do not put your hands behind your butt to just, save it. Just, take, just it. take it because my hands throbbed for like three days. Right, my ass healed the next day. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> my dad, my dad was big on pulling my ear. He would grab me by the ear and just yank me everywhere. I don't know. Man. These days with my yeah, you know, my kids. You know what? I I I haven't. Uh, I was actually talking to Tommy, and I was like, "You don't know what a belt is, so you yeah. need to be quiet." But. Yeah. If they get me to a level, I'll pinch them. I'll, well, I'll give them a good. A I'll good tell you one thing I learned from Super Nanny. 
because I'm a big, aggressive, loud. Mm-hmm. I can't hear real good in my left ear, so I, I'm, a, I'm a loud speaker. And it's funny, I had a friend of mine the other day, he goes, oh, Mike, I'm listening to your podcast. You just sound so calm and so relaxed and so chill. And I'm like, yeah, because I have headphones on and I can actually hear what the person across from me is actually saying. Right. As soon as I take these headphones <laughs> off, I can't hear shit. So I'm over here like, oh, what's up? Right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, it's just one of those things where you're loud. And on Super Nanny, I saw this um, show on TV. It was a British lady. And she got down and put them on the stairs and got right in their face. We're talking like little kids that were throwing temp- temper tantrums and right. things. And she would get right in their eyes, right in their nose, almost like you're going to kiss them. Mm-hmm. But you're like right in their space. And you point at them and you whisper, all right, listen here. If you do not clean your room by the time I get done cooking dinner, you're not eating dinner and you're going to bed hungry. Do you understand me? Right. Well, that means business. Right? That, that means yeah. business, man. I'm yeah. talking like that's like it was funny because when I started doing that with my oldest son, because I used to just scream, Colby, get over here. I started right. just yelling and screaming at him. Right. So it became normal. Dad's just being dad. He's just yelling. He yells us all the time. Right. But I go and do this technique. It turns into a vicious circle. Too. Oh, it does. Yeah. I go in and do this technique of uh, whispering. And I'm going to try that. It, it works. I'm I telling will. you. Right in your nose, right face, face, point at him and whisper. And then it's funny because I turned around and walked away and he walks to the kitchen. And he goes, mom, dad's mad. Because <laughs> <laughs> you went from loud to like. I was like, listen, I was like, thank you, Super Nanny. Yeah, that was you awesome. There you go. I don't watch much TV, but Super Nanny is a really good one. Yeah. You know, For if, I, if I watch TV, I watch Shark Tank. I yeah. watch yeah. stuff that yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's some somewhat give me something positive. I try to stay away from news. I don't I, watch I, news at no, all. So, you know why? Yeah. I make my own news. Man. Yeah. Me they, and you making our own news. Exactly. We're going to go kill yeah. some deer. Yeah. Let's do it. My brother. I love your studio, man. Dude. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. I love you. You're an amazing guy. I love your wife even better. If something happens to you, tell her to call me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love her to death. She's a sweetie. Um, anyway, hard worker too, man. I've seen her. She she puts the hours in. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's something that she, she didn't have it at the beginning, but now she's picked up on it and she yep. knows that it's that's the only way. Yep. There's there's no magic. That's, there's no, that's the magic. Hey, yeah. you know what the secret success is, right? Absolutely. Fucking hard work. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> much respect, work, my brother. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, have a good one.